verse number 18. I'm reading from the King James Version, and sometimes I'll slip into the NIV Version. But the word says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. Let us pray. All worthy, most worshipful, and blessed Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence, lifting your name to glory, because you are an awesome God, you are a mighty God, and you're the God of our salvation. And from the song, we know that you reign forever. From our hearts, we know that you reign forever. In all of our being, we know that you reign supreme and forevermore. For it's in the name of Jesus the Christ that we come before you. Amen. Amen. And amen. The title, if there were to be a title this morning, would be Given Thanks. But we have to change our words into our actions. We have to change the words into actions. First Thessalonians tells us that, in the fifth chapter, that in everything give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Notice that everything has to go through Christ Jesus. Everything. Before it gets to the will of God. And before it gets to God in seriousness and in truth. In spirit and in truth. And then it says concerning you. Well, who are you? Heirs and joint heirs with Jesus the Christ. <laughs> the saved and the sanctified. The holy and set apart. Hmm. That's, let me give you a little history lesson and then we'll get started. Thessalonica was the chief seaport of ancient Macedonia and an important commercial and military center. The Apostle Paul and Silas were forced to leave Philippi, so they traveled to Thessalonica. Paul taught in the synagogue, which was his habit, for three days, for three Sabbaths, and, the, and was forced to leave because of antagonistic Jews. The Jews stirred up the people in Thessalonica and accused the believers of promoting treasonous ideas. The believers fell under great persecution, and Paul did not feel that he had been given enough time to preach them the Christian doctrines. We have to learn as Christians what doctrines we operate in. We say the Apostles' Creed, but do we really fully understand it? Hmm. One, one comment was made to me during the week about the Holy Catholic Church. And some people have a tendency to believe that that's the Roman Catholic Church. And I had to make the correction that it was the Church Universal. Christians serving Christ universal is the Holy Catholic Church, not the Roman Catholic Church. But there are other areas that we need to study and show ourselves approved so that we can understand this Christian walk that we have. Paul wanted to return to Thessalonica but was hindered by Satan. And instead, Timothy was sent to complete the work that Paul had begun. The book of Thessalonians was written between 50 and 51 AD by Paul. Timothy returned and reported the good news of their steadfastness and zeal in spreading the gospel. That's a question for us today. Do we have a steadfastness? That means we're holding on to the word of God and we're 
telling somebody else because we have a zeal. Because we fervently walk with Christ. Because Christ is our all in all. And we understand the importance of serving the risen Christ. Well, there were some ethical problems and some misconceptions. We don't have them today, though. We don't have ethical problems where everybody wants to dot every I and cross every T and never check with the Spirit of God. We don't have that. We don't have any misconceptions about the Word because we didn't really pray to God. We prayed to ourselves and told ourselves this is what it means. Hmm. These believers were concerned that believers who had already died would miss Christ's return. Dear Lord knows I wouldn't want to miss Christ's return, but I need to understand that it's not just since Christ was hung on a cross that we had the right or that saints have a right to the tree of life. All those, including Father Abraham, who believe in God and had relationships with God before Christ are also included in God's chosen people. Amen? Amen. So the church at Thessalonica successfully spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would surely like to be able to say that the church at St. Paul, AME 9 Church in Salisbury, spreads the gospel. Spread the good news about Jesus the Christ. Yeah, yeah. In season and out of season. That's and that's what our purpose is to tell everybody about this Jesus that we serve. That's right. That's right. That's right. In Thessalonians, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Mm -hmm. That's an action word that we need to take care of and need to have a little definition of. There is so much more to Thanksgiving in the holiday season than turkey and stuffing, mashed potato or sweet potato, loaded with some gravy, with some hot biscuits, macaroni and cheese, and being stuffed.
and instead of backstabbing them and slipping the tongue at them and doing all sorts of diverse evil things, we are supposed to be praying for those who are over us that they might grow in the grace of God, that they might teach us the word and in season and out of season, that they might be examples of who this Christ is that we're striving to become. That's right. That's right. Well, now, admonish in Greek is new that a to reprove gently, mm -hmm. to warn. Who are we warning? Each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to esteem. Uh oh. The Greek word is he, he, a, 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 he. Which means to lead with official authority. To have the rule over them very highly in love for their works. In love. We, we miss that. Because it's not an emotion that we are to pass along to each other. It's the spirit of the living God and sharing it. Because it comes from the inside of us and radiates to others that they'll know whose children we are. They'll know that we are heirs and joint heirs. they know that we are disciples. They'll know that we walk or we're striving to walk up right before Christ and that we're not perfect, but only Christ is perfect. But there is grace and mercy that abounds for us. Hmm. And the esteem is for them very highly in love for their works to toil as an effort or occupation sake. And be at peace among yourselves. <clears throat> be at peace among yourselves. Be
reminds us and reminds us to give us thanks always for all things under God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us look in another location, Psalm 95. It says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. In addition, there is a question that we must ask ourselves. Are we bound to thank God always for each other? Huh, brother, as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity love of every one of you all toward each other abounded. Huh. <laughs> love amongst each of you, every one of you, all of you, all of you all abounds. Mean that it's multiplying, growing, because the more you show, the more you get. Supposedly. The more you give, okay. Now, to bring this message home and just a little bit clearer, John states that greater love have no man than this. Yes. Mm. That a man lay down his life for his friends. No greater love. Lay down your life. Maybe for the children. Maybe. Maybe for your good, good, good friend. Maybe. And John also stated that God so loved the world hmm, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, yes, but yes. have everlasting life. Yes. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes. As disciples, our duty, our founding duty, is to carry the gospel of the Lord into the highways and the byways. Yes, Reverend Tucker's supposed to do it sometimes. Yes, sir. all the other ministers are supposed to do it sometimes. Yes, I'm supposed to do it sometimes. But it's all of us that have that duty because we call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves disciples. And one disciple begets another disciple. One sheep begets another sheep. No goat is going to bring a sheep in the beginning. <laughs> and now, to be saved, what does that mean? Romans breaks it down really and real nice. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart 